Hello and welcome to yet another Sot and Brain Hub video. My name is Charlie and today I will be giving you a unique look at the anatomy of the nasal cavity and the vocal cords via real patient endoscopic footage. Before we view this footage, let's briefly cover the anatomy of the nasal cavity and the nasopharynx. On the screen is a side view of the nasal cavity. The left side of the screen represents anterior and the right side of the screen represents posterior. So let's take a look at some of the important structures. At the posterior superior aspect of the nasal cavity, we can see the position of the sphenoid sinus. This is one of the four paranasal sinuses and is contained within the sphenoid bone. Just beneath this is the area named the nasopharynx. This is the upper portion of the pharynx and is located directly posterior to the nasal cavity. Beneath the nasopharynx is the oropharynx and beneath the oropharynx is the laryngeal or hypopharynx. Within the nasal cavity itself, there are three nasal turbinates. These are long, narrow passageways that warm and humidify the air. These nasal turbinates are also known as nasal concha. The inferior turbinate is the largest. At the posterior lateral aspect of the nasal cavity, we can see the entrance to the auditory tube. This tube links the nasopharynx to the middle ear. If this tube is to become occluded, the patient would suffer from otitis media, which is inflammation of the middle ear. So now, let's move on to the actual endoscopic footage. Here we can see the external nares, also known as the nostrils. As we move through these, we meet the nasal hairs. These have an important role in filtering the air entering the nasal cavity before it reaches the lungs. Now we have entered the nasal cavity where we can see one of the nasal turbinates. As we move posteriorly through this nasal cavity, we are emulating the route that the air would take. We are now approaching the opening of the auditory tube on the lateral wall. This is also known as the eustachian tube. And just posterior to this is the torus tubularis, which is known as the cushion of the auditory canal. It is a mucosal elevation in the lateral aspect of the nasopharynx. But before we move down the pharynx to meet the laryngeal inlet, let's take a look at a schematic to familiarise ourselves with the anatomy. Here we can see two images of the laryngeal inlet. On the left image, the vocal cords are abducted, apart, and on the right, they are adducted, together. In these images, we are looking directly down the throat, and we can see the base of the tongue, as well as the epiglottis, which is currently in the upright or open position. It is in this position when we are breathing, to allow air down into the larynx. When eating or drinking, the epiglottis covers the laryngeal inlet to prevent the entry of food and liquid into the lungs. We can also see here the vestibular folds. These are also known as the false vocal cords. They are folds of mucous membrane that enclose the vestibular ligaments. Here are the vocal folds themselves. These are the true vocal cords. They are twin infoldings of mucous membrane that vibrate and modulate the flow of air expelled on phonation. Let's now have a look at the rimoglottidis. This is the opening between the true vocal cords and the arytenoid cartilages. The arytenoid cartilages are a pair of small three-sided pyramids to which the vocal cords attach to enable vocal cord movement. Now we have familiarised ourselves with the anatomy, let's get back to the endoscopic footage. As we move down the pharynx, we meet the lingual tonsils. These are a collection of lymphatic tissue at the base of the tongue. Beyond these, we can see very clearly the epiglottis, which is currently in the upright position. It is important to also point out the vellecula. The epiglottic vellecula is a depression just behind the root of the tongue. It serves as a spit trap. Saliva is temporarily held there to prevent the initiation of the swallow reflex. Here we can also see the base of the tongue. It is important to remember that the tongue stretches this far back and anatomically is far greater than what we see in the mouth. As the endoscope moves, the image we see should now represent the schematics I have just shown you. Feel free to pause the video here and refer back to those drawings to remind yourselves of the structures involved. I'll now point out some other important anatomical structures, such as the cuneiform tubercles. 
These are paired cartilages that attach to the arytenoids and support the vocal cords and the lateral epiglottis. Let's also point out the true vocal cords, which can be seen here as the two V-shaped white bands that have just opened. And also let's point out the more lateral, false vocal cords. We will look at these in more detail later on. When looking at the larynx, it is important to remember where the esophagus and the trachea can be found. If you look closely, you can actually see the rings of cartilage in the start of the trachea. Remember that the larynx leads to the trachea and then to the lungs for the passage of air, whilst the pharynx leads to the esophagus and then the stomach for the passage of food and drink. It is also important to remember that the larynx is anterior to the pharynx. In this view, we can also see the ary epiglottic folds. These are two ligamentomuscular structures in the supraglottic larynx that protect the airway when swallowing. They mark the lateral borders of the laryngeal inlet and are an important landmark when intubating a patient. We can also clearly see the rimoglottidis, which is the opening between the true vocal cords and the arytenoid cartilages, as mentioned earlier. The final anatomical structure that I would like to mention is the piriform fossa. There are actually two of these, one on either side of the aryepiglottic folds. They are clinically relevant as they are a common place for food to become trapped. Before we end this video, let's take a quick look at the movement of the vocal cords in slow motion. Firstly, we will be able to see the cords moving apart. This is called abduction. We will now be able to see the cords moving together. This is called adduction. Remember that adduction adds the two sides together. And that marks the end of this video. Hopefully now you have a good understanding of the endoscopic anatomy of the nasal cavity, vocal cords and surrounding anatomy. Thank you for listening. Find us on Facebook, Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.